Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. It's still Easter and it always will be because Christ our Lord conquered death and is alive today, bringing us his, uh, his word, which gives us life and salvation. Uh, we at Emmanuel, the staff here, we, uh, we love you and we miss you and we want to make sure that you know that. So take a look. Good morning. The Lord be with you. He is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. We give thanks that we get to be together uh, in any way we can. And we know we're feeling it here. It's, it's tough to not be able to be together. Um, and so we are, we are thankful for the opportunity to gather in this way and pray that God would um, work his, uh, his miracles and, and bring forth healing on this land. Um, but until then, we, we trust and we, we hold fast to God's word and, and to the opportunities we have to gather here together. Speaking of God's word, we, we wanted to present to you some options. We know um, we don't know what the, the upcoming month would look like, but we do know that it's important to stay connected to God and his word and to each other in the best way we can. And so we've come up with uh, some opportunities for you to continue to study God's word. Um, you're going to find a document in the description below that will include uh, links or emails for you to connect to people in our church and opportunities for you to, to grow and, and uh, dig deeper and study God's word in this time. So we encourage you to do that. If you can't find that anywhere, it's okay. Uh, it, the same information will come out in an email um, later this week. And uh, we'd love to see you and study God's word together. So I pray God's blessings on you as you worship uh, in your home together. And um, we'll begin with our first song. Christian friends rejoice and sing now is the triumph of our King to all the world glad news we bring Alleluia 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 Your name In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
we have an opportunity to come before God today and confess our sins. We'll do so responsibly uh, as best as you can. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. We confess our sins together. It may seem strange, but it's okay. Say these words out loud and confess your sins, knowing that God hears us, answers us, and forgives us according to his great love and mercy. Almighty God, in humility and with repentant hearts, we come before you with shame and regret. We admit and confess our sinfulness. We have not lived up to our calling as your peaceable people. We have not done the good you demand and have not been the people you would have us to be. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sins in thought, word, and deed. Have mercy on us, merciful Father. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, forgive us all that needs your forgiving grace. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, direct us to serve you faithfully all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God has promised his merciful forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn their hearts to him. He will revive them and speak peace to his people. And so in the stead and by the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. I'm Greg. This is Olivia. And this is Cooper. Our scripture reading for the Sunday is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in, in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guilt guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I will give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 26. John writes, Eight days later his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is our gospel reading for today. We continue with our children's message with Laura Gilliland.
That was delicious. That was my fruit smoothie that I like to make for myself when I am super thirsty. Have you ever been that thirsty before where you just have a taste for something and it's going to quench that thirst? Or maybe like when you've played outside and it's nice and warm. We've had some nice warm days while we've been home. And maybe one of those times you wanted to come in and have a nice cool drink to cool you off. Well, there are times when we are thirsty, right? And water or drinks quench our thirst. But what about those times when we've been thirsty for God? Have you ever been in one of those times before when you just feel so sad or when maybe you're in just deep despair? Those are times when we are thirsty for God. So how do we quench that thirst? Well, not necessarily by drinking something, but by filling ourselves with God. Maybe that's by praying to him or by listening to some Christian music or watching something on Right Now Media or doing a devotion, opening your Bible, or even just talking to mom and dad about your feelings and bringing God into that discussion. Those are ways that we are thirsty for God and it's also a way that he can speak to us and come to us and quench that thirst. Rely on God. He is there for you. Have a great week. are looking a lot different these days than we did before and well I've gotten a little shaggier since the last time that you saw me a little little grayer kind of like this look but a lot of us when we look in the mirror we don't even recognize who we are anymore in fact there is a condition that when you look at yourself in the mirror you you don't even recognize who you are now I'm not talking about something like dementia, which unfortunately my, my mother is, is suffering with. And so when she sees me, uh, she doesn't know who I am anymore. And it's not that she confuses me with my twin brother or anything like that. It, she, she just doesn't know who I am. She just knows that I am one of her people, which isn't a bad thing. But there, there's another condition. In fact, 2% of the population suffers with something called prosopagnosia. And what it means is, is that you literally can't recognize a face. You, you don't know who your family is. You don't know your friends. You don't know your neighbors or coworkers. In fact, you cannot even recognize yourself when you see it in the mirror. Well, 
Today we want to talk about something that's even more scary than not being able to recognize your own face in the mirror, and that is when we cannot recognize our soul when we look in a spiritual mirror. As we turn to the Word of God this morning, we see in Psalm 51 that King David no longer could recognize himself. Now we know the story. David was a shepherd boy. He was a devout person who worshiped the Lord. The Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. In fact, at one time he was, he was so filled with joy at being in the presence of the Lord that he danced naked. Now I wouldn't recommend doing that in church, but that was the kind of person in the relationship that he had with God. Now he's the king, he is a faithful king, and God has blessed him immensely. But then one day, instead of going out with his army like he was supposed to do, David stays at home. And he's looking around and he sees there in the dusk of the evening, he sees a beautiful woman who is taking a bath. He recognizes her to be Bathsheba, and so he plans how he can have her. And the, the way that he goes about doing that is he has... Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, murdered. He commits adultery, he commits murder, and then he lies to cover it all up. Well, he marries Bathsheba, he has a son. He thinks that he has literally gotten away with murder until one day the prophet Nathan comes to him and he confronts him. He says, there was once a man, a very rich man, a man who had thousands and thousands of sheep in his flock. They were wonderful and they were beautiful. But the man was so greedy that he saw another man's little lamb and he stole that lamb from that poor man. Mind you, it's the only lamb that this man had. Well, when David heard about this, he said, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. The prophet had literally shown David his own life. He had put the proverbial mirror up to his soul, and David didn't recognize himself. And so in his rage, having been a poor shepherd boy once himself, he again roars, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. He does deserve to die. He has broken God's law. And God's law says that the wages of sin is death. One vital thing that we need to understand about God is that God is holy. Not just holy, but holy, 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 the Bible says. He's perfectly holy. He is perfectly righteous. He cannot tolerate sin certainly in those that he has created in his own image, which means the apple of his eye, the, the pinnacle of his creation, people, people like King David, people like you and me. And so as we look around today, we see that the image of human beings has been, has been marred. It has been drastically changed from what God intended Sometimes we don't even recognize who we are anymore. I just heard the other day that the governor of New York says that when we overcome, finally, this pandemic, it won't be by the hand of God, but rather because of the genius of science. I don't think he recognizes who it is that is the creator of science, the one who is the creator of everything. Speaking of pandemics, I've just come across a few statistics. Normally, about one in three Americans deals with anxiety on a regular basis. That has now doubled in the last month. I read that 80% of Americans now have, or I should say that the, the increase in help hotlines and mental health hotlines has increased by 80% in the last month. And the calls to the hotlines for abuse of alcohol and drugs has increased by 800%. Domestic abuse and 
restraining orders have skyrocketed because of this volatile mixture of close quarters, strained relationships, and the anxiety that we all have over the future. When we see what happened to David, as he has been confronted with his sin, when he sees that he no longer recognizes the image that God had created in him, he cries out, O oh God, have mercy on me. During this time, we would do well to call out for God's mercy once again. Literally to say to God, unsin me. Can I go back to the time when, when I had a great relationship with you? Can I go back to the time when, when I was pure and when I was clean? Well, there's another thing that we need to understand about God that's vitally important. Not only is God holy, but God is also merciful. And so we read along with King David, he cries out, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. He says in verse two, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Notice that he doesn't say, have mercy on me, O God. I really didn't mean to do it. <laughs> he doesn't say, have mercy on me, O God. I'm really not such a bad person. He doesn't say, have mercy on me, O God. Everybody else is doing it, so what's the big deal? Instead, he says, have mercy on me, O God. Your love is unfailing. Your compassion is so great. And so matter no matter how far we descend into the shadows, no matter the depths of the sin that we have committed, whether it is murder or, or adultery or, or lying, as in the case of King David, whether it is, is our greed that gets the best of us, whether it is simple irritation at being cooped up, whether it is anger against our, our leaders, whether it is anxiety over the state of affairs that we are in, there is no sin, nothing that we could ever do that can change God. You see, finally, it's not about us at all. It's all about God's love and the compassion that he has for us. So what would we have to believe about God to trust that God would answer our prayer just as he answered David's? Again, those words... Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. You see, God is love. And we see, even in the Old Testament, how God changes people's hearts. Later on in the psalm, we have the familiar words, Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. It is the blood of the Lamb that cleansed David, the lamb that we now know to be Jesus, our savior. And so whenever we see that cross, whenever we remember the empty tomb, we know that it is the blood of the lamb that has cleansed us and has restored the image that the world may no longer see. He goes on to write, to write create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and create in me a right spirit, that spirit that will do the will of God once again. I know there are times as we look into the mirror and we don't like what we see, especially in these difficult and trying times. I want you to remember a dream that, that someone once had. It was a pastor, and, and he was dreaming about the judgment seat of God. He thought that there would be a, a big book with all the names in it and a big God who was judging everyone's sins. But instead, he saw a huge scale. And on one side of the scale were all the good things that he had done, after all, he was a pastor, so there were a number of materials there on that side of the scales. And then on the other, the demons were placing all the evil things that he had done. Well, to his horror, 
the side with all the evil things that he had done, was piling up so fast that the angels on the other side couldn't keep up until three nails were placed on the good side. Three bloody nails. Three nails that represented the sacrifice that Jesus had made for him. And then no matter how many things that the demons had placed on the evil side, the scales remained the same. The sacrifice of Jesus, the perfect lamb, has paid the price of our sin. It restored David to his place as king of the people of Israel. And it restores you and me to our place as children of God. During these times, as we again look into the mirror, so often we'll see that reflection, a a reflection that is not all that flattering of who we want to be. But I want you to look again. And as you look closely, you'll see that the mirror is filled with God's grace. And right there at the center is that pure Lamb of God, the one who has paid the price for all of our sins, who has literally unsinned us. During these times when when people look around, they need to see the face of God by God's grace. They will see you, a forgiven sinner, a reflection of the Lamb of God who loves the world through word and deed. Amen. Join me now as we profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our prayers. God of mercy, keep us from the doubts and fears that cripple us and prevent us from knowing the fullness of your saving peace and gracious presence. Teach us to trust in your word and to believe with all our hearts, minds, bodies, and strength in Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins, and raised for our justification. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, bestow upon your church your Holy Spirit and all the gifts that come down from on high. Grant to us faithful pastors who will preach faithfully and ears to hear your word proclaimed. Give us boldness in our witness before the world, encouraged to speak your name without fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of might, Counsel the nations and their leaders in the paths of peace and justice. Bless us with wise, faithful, and just leaders who will protect the sanctity of life and defend us against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Make us wise and discerning citizens who use our gift of liberty for your noble purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us so that in our neighborhoods and communities, we may manifest the love of Christ as well as his strength. Deliver us from all that would threaten our homes and families. Protect the police, firefighters, disaster relief workers, and medical personnel who attend to us, as well as the places where we live and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to all who suffer want or need to the sick in their afflictions, to those troubled in mind, and to those whom death draws near. We pray especially for Richard Hoferly, Jim Kearley, Ken Knutson, 
Marlene Laramie, Ken Mays, Nova Nolte, Bob Olszewski, Lee Pop, and Jan Smith. And Father, we pray for the furloughed or those who have lost work or looking for work, that they would be blessed with work, that they could use the skills and gifts that you've given them. We ask that you would heal and sustain all these according to your gracious will and preserve them in faith to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, deliver us from the distractions of things that do not matter, that we may focus on the needful things of your word and sacraments, and so be found faithful when our Lord returns in his glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless us with the good gifts of the earth, with the fruits of our honest labors, and with a kind and generous heart. Accept the worship of our hearts and voices, along with the tithes and offerings we provide as part of our gratitude and thanksgiving. Open our eyes and hearts to the needs of the poor, that we may serve them in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed God and Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and teach us to trust in your will, to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial, both for us and for all whom we have prayed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a reminder that, as we mentioned in the welcome announcements, we have the Connect documents that are becoming available. Uh, if you look in the description for the service, you can see a link there, or if you go on our website, uh, they should be up shortly, and there'll also be an email coming out with those as well. So we close with our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We join in singing our closing song.